I'm LT, and thanks for watching Truck Tech. Now, whether we're out on the trail or working in the shop, you're not going to want to miss a single episode. So all you got to do is hit that subscribe button. Well, there it is. Project Low and Slow is finally outside the shop because it's done. And today we finally get to feel how that Turbo 292 drives under full boost. Finito. Finally at the end, the build is complete, so get excited. Well, buddy, we finally made it. It's been a long time since we first took the cab off this rusty old frame and sent it off to powder coat. You know, my favorite part about low and slow is you probably can't tell that the cab has ever even been off of the frame because it has such a nice patina finish on the outside. It looks like we just pulled it out of a field. But as they say, there's more than meets the eye. And that is what custom truck building is all about, my friend. It's the subtle touches, such as the brand new paint on the roof, draping it down the back, an entire new bed floor, added some nice wide wheel tubs, then finished up the exterior with some new chrome trim and chrome bumpers. And most of our effort was spent on the chassis. Now, even though this truck looks old and decrepit from the outside, we spent a whole lot of time on the chassis to make it run and drive like a brand new truck that's right off the showroom floor. But if you take a seat on the inside, it will drop you right back into 1965. It still has that nostalgic original feel. It's just freshened up with new paint, custom seat upholstery, door panels, and some nice gauges and steering wheel. And there's a whole lot of details that we're leaving out. So here's a quick look back at where we got started. We bought this truck sight unseen and we're very pleased to find out how nice of a patina it had on its surface. It came to us from Marshall, Texas, where the sun is always shining. So the elements had plenty of time to work their magic on the paint without completely rotting away the metal. And this truck would actually run and drive. And let me tell you, it was an experience. The manual shift on the column was a throwback for sure, which made this truck an absolute blast. Even though the suspension was completely shot, the engine had a slight miss, and the bench seat was like riding on a horse-drawn wagon. <laughs> Feel the bump. So we didn't waste any time on low and slow. We got right to work on tearing her down. We're not going to be touching much of anything on the exterior, but we did want to address the frame. So the first thing was to remove that bed and cab off the chassis. Once it was all stripped down, we sent it off to get a new coat of semi-gloss black powder coat, and then built out the frame with an all-new suspension, which will sit nice and low to the ground, and greatly improved the handling of this 55-year-old pickup. Finally, we paired a GM 292 straight six with a Tremec five-speed from American Powertrain, which will give this truck truly a unique driving experience. Having a 292 straight six by itself is pretty unique. However, we wanted to turn it up a notch even further than that. So on the passenger side, we fabricated a mount and installed an S366 turbo that's putting out 11 pounds of boost. Now, the awesome thing about that is stock, this engine would typically only put out about 165 horsepower, we more than doubled that and got it somewhere right at 500 pounds of torque. I'd say that's pretty awesome in itself. Now, those numbers are impressive, but for me, the cool thing is the unique factor. Because if you go to a truck show and there's 100 C10s, you're mostly going to find small block Chevys and LSs and perhaps the occasional big block. But this one, this one truly stands out from the crowd. Well, fun to talk about, fun to look at, more fun to drive. So I say, uh, let's hit the road there. All right, don't wreck it. Yeah, no promises. There is nothing like the feeling you experience when you drive an old classic truck. And driving this 1965 C10 that me and old Lawrence built is no different. Just because it's a custom built truck doesn't mean it doesn't still have those same old classic and nostalgic styling cues. I think my favorite part about this old truck is the sound of it because it's so deceiving or confusing for people. Because think about it, you see an old truck like this and you're gonna think, oh, it's gotta have a V8 under the hood. And then you hear that distinctive inline six sound and that whistle of the turbo and the blow off valve. And you're like, wait a second, I'm looking for a Supra or a Skyline or some sort of import car. But then it'll finally click and you realize, wait a second, that old C10 has got a turbocharged straight six under the hood, 
And that right there is what makes this truck so unique. This is just a fun truck to drive, man. God, don't get better. Does not get better. <laughs> I love it. An old rusty truck that drives and handles just like a brand new sports car. Does not get any better than that. Next, James Otto's love for the C10 is mutual. It was my grandfather's truck, spent its whole life on a farm up in North Dakota, and I wanted it to be pro touring uh, truck, and that's the way we built it. If you do a lot of towing like we do, whether it's a car, a boat, or even a utility trailer, keeping it secured when it's left unattended is pretty important. This is the Bolt Off Vehicle Coupler Lock, and it'll make sure your trailer stays exactly where you left it. And the best part is, it can be programmed to your truck's key. First, program the lock to your key by turning it all the way to the right. The Off Vehicle Coupler Lock works with all popular trailer ball sizes. Just slide it under the coupler and close it down. This horseshoe bar prevents access to the lock, and this long pin secures it to the lock mechanism. And as you can see, this trailer isn't going anywhere. We're not the only ones cruising the back roads in a tricked out C10. We asked our buddy, country music artist James Otto, to join us in his 66 Resto Mod featured at the SEMA show. We put our trucks side by side just to contrast how each were built in completely different styles. Now, I don't think we could have found a cooler comparison between two trucks which started out life virtually identical and they've wound up in two totally different places. So James, tell us a little bit about your truck. Well, you know, it's a 1966 C10. It was my grandfather's. Spent its whole life on a farm up in North Dakota and I wanted it to be pro touring uh, truck and that's the way we built it. I love the old patina look. It's a great look, but this thing needed to look high tech. It needed to look like 2020, and, and uh, hopefully we accomplish that. It's uh, got an LS under the a hood, about 500 horse, uh, six speed stick underneath it. It's got ride tech suspension and does everything I need it to do. Tell me about the chassis. Did you start from scratch with a whole aftermarket unit or did you build off of a stock frame? You know, we found a, a stock short wheelbase chassis and then uh, did a frame stiffener in it and then did the stage three ride tech set up underneath it. So it handles like its own rams. It's been a blast to drive. I'm having fun with it. Now, other than the patina finish, the other big difference between these two is what we stuck under the hood oh, yeah. of this one. So tell us your thoughts on this C10. I love that you kept it like that. I, I think that that's such a cool way to do it. LSs are, you know, they're belly button. Everybody's got one, you know what I mean? I love my LS and it's perfect for autocrossing and that's what I wanted to do. But with a patina truck and this vibe, hard to beat. This is probably the coolest comparison that we could have done. I think so too. The juxtaposition of same body style and ending up in a completely different spot, man, that's what hot rodding's all about. Got that right. Well, it was great hanging out with James and his beautiful C10, and it's built in a totally different style from this truck here, but they're both perfect examples of classic American iron. Now, for our truck, it's time to put it to the test and see how fast it's gonna go in a straight line. Now, anytime we finish a build, you'll always see us driving them on the road, see how it feels and handles, but you'll definitely always see us at some sort of racetrack, and I don't even care what kind it is. And the great thing about a drag strip, well, it's sort of a universal measuring stick because I don't care where you live, there's bound to be some sort of a drag strip near your home. So it's a great way to compare your truck or car to any other vehicle out on the road. I have no clue how quick this truck's gonna be, but we're gonna find out and we're gonna have fun doing it. All right, well, get to it, you're first. Hopefully I don't break it. Uh, we're about to run a little C10 down the track and see how fast it goes. I don't know how fast it's gonna go. Hey, don't break it. Hope I don't break it. Why are you always worried about me breaking everything? I know you too well. Do you?
broke it. Doesn't sound great. LP's gonna be mad at me. That's all right. We might have slightly broken. What's rattling? So what happened? Was it shifting funny or what? So when I went to put it in a gear, I didn't want to take it, so I I, I just stopped. All right, like kill I it. Shifted in the second. When I went to put it into third, it didn't want to take it. Turn that up. But something is wrapped. That's why we trailer these things. No, I went from third to second. No, not third. This dude's messing me up with numbers. You know I can't count past five. <laughs> what? So I went to second. When I went to third, it like didn't want it. So I had just had to get out. LT's gonna be mad at me for a while. He'll get over it. And if he doesn't, it doesn't matter. Well, you win some, you lose some. And? For complications. Don't really know what they are at the moment, but we're gonna take it back to the shop and we're gonna figure it out. That's all part of it. You build it, you break it, you bring it back, figure out what's wrong, and rebuild it. Some things are just better left unsaid, and I really don't have anything to add, so uh, yeah. In the trailer and back to the shop. He's just upset because he didn't get the drive. With our C10, I was worried that we had damaged the 292, but it turns out the flywheel bolts had backed out, so it was just rattling around. No big deal. Want to learn more about this build? Check it out, powernationtv.com. Next, rescuing this jacked up Tundra. For the most part, we get to turn wrenches in our nice air-conditioned shop, but every now and again, usually in the middle of August, we like to hit the road for a segment we call driveway rescue. And with some help from Rock Auto, we get to restore or fix up a viewer's truck. And to help me install all these parts that just showed up, I've got some help. Guys, this is Austin Colson. Why don't you tell them a little bit about yourself? Sure. I'm from Phoenix, Arizona. I'm a custom car builder. I've built everything from the world's smallest street legal car up to a 20-ton custom pizza truck. And I hope some pickup trucks as well, right? Absolutely. But I'm looking at these parts and I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be working on. Well, today we've got a 2014 Toyota Tundra. Now, that is a little bit newer vehicle, but it does have some higher miles on it. And the viewer, his main complaint was that the back brakes were completely shot. So I logged on to Rock Auto's website and I picked out some back brakes, some front brakes, some 100,000 mile tune-up parts, and because Rock Auto also sells some aftermarket accessories, I pretty much grabbed one of everything. Awesome. Well, let's get this loaded up and get on the road. Sounds like a plan to me. And we'll put the jungle gym right on top. Well, there's a big red Toyota. That must be us. Looks like it. Well, you must be Jason. Yes, sir. You must be LT. Absolutely. Look at the size of this truck. This is pretty cool, huh? Yes, I, I, I enjoy it. So you do oil work, right? I do work on the oil line, yes. Well, you need a truck like this, that's for sure. Uh, you said you needed some brakes on the back of it, right? Definitely, yeah. Otherwise, I mean, this is a pretty cool looking truck, but I got some extra goodies in here. I think we can spruce this up, nice. um, give it a little extra protection. Excellent. That'd be great. How long you had it? I've had it for about uh, two years now. This is a cool truck. I like. Is, is the red kind of the reason you got it? Well, it definitely helped, yes. <laughs> well, this might be the first Tundra I've seen that wasn't gold or white. I like the red. Should be a pretty straightforward job. Well, we get a van full of parts. You want to check it out real quick? I think you'd That'd be surprised be by how much stuff we fit in there. All right, that sounds cool. All right. All these parts right here oh for your Tundra. Goodness. Look at that. Well, you guys work at UPS? My truck is a 2014 Toyota Tundra. It's not stock. I work in the oil and gas industry, so I needed a truck that was lifted four-wheel drive, and that was the first one I liked, so I got it. My boy loves hopping in and out of it. He loves to start it all the time. My wife, on the other hand, has to be observant of what she wears when she tries to climb into the truck. <laughs> my name is Tayton. I'm 12 years old, and I love my dad's truck. Um, I love the sound and how it feels when you get into it. I don't have my driver's license yet, but one day I will drive this truck. All right. 
Any idea what this is? I can't figure out where to put it. With the coronavirus hitting, it, it's pretty much shut down my a lot of my industry. And I've been out of work for at least five months now, and it's been difficult trying to figure out how to get back to work and what I'm going to be doing. Hopefully things pick back up real soon here. That you guys are going to come in and do all this, and I don't have a bill at the end of it is just amazing. I just feel totally blessed by it. I can't thank you guys enough for what you're about to do. It's it's amazing. Well, since brakes was the first thing on the list, that's where we're going to get started. We just got to get the truck off of this incline. That's good. So Jason's never actually done a brake job on this truck before, and that's understandable. If you've never done disc brakes, it can be a little bit confusing to figure out how it comes apart, but it's really quite simple. The first objective is you've got to get the caliper off because that kind of sandwiches the pads in, and the pads are actually what stop the truck. So once the caliper comes away, the old pads lift out, and let's see if the tire shop was telling the truth. Yep. Indeed, they are completely worn out and they need a replacement. So, it's a good thing he called us. Now for the brake. You figured that one out okay? Uh, yeah, it uh, turns out you're supposed to use an M8 by 1.25 volt to remove these. Oh, look at that. But if you don't have one, we can go the LT way and do a hammer. I like it. With the brakes taken care of, we're going to move on to a couple other regular maintenance items. This truck just rolled over 110,000 miles, so we're going to start by changing out a couple of the fluids most people don't think of, namely the differential. Well, it looks like someone beat me to this because that fluid is actually really clean. but. It's going to get new stuff anyway. All right, here we go. Yep, that's definitely been changed as well. Now I'm getting messy, so I'm going to back up. Next, body protection for the field. This is an instant read uh, thermometer. And we are going to do a little temperature gig and see how hot the vehicle is here at 3.30 in the afternoon. It says 155 degrees. I think that's a little hot to be working. I don't know what he's talking about. I think August is the perfect time to be working outside. Now this truck has 110,000 miles on the clock, but we only know about the last 50,000 miles while Jason's owned it. And in that time, we know the spark plugs have not been replaced. So what I'm going to do, remove the coil packs, get those spark plugs out of here, and get a fresh set in from Rock Auto. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's see what they're looking like. Wow, overall, that looks like really good wear, but it does look like they are original. You know, normally I do like a power step, but in a situation like this with a truck that spends a lot of time going off road, these running boards actually double as a little bit of body protection because it stops mud and rocks and stuff that's getting trapped by your tires and thrown up from scratching the paint on the side of the truck. So pro tip, when you're installing the brackets on the bottom side of your running board, don't spin it around because they'll probably fall out. Say that passes the test. Another practical add-on for Jason's truck was this grill guard. And that was evident when he had to replace a $1,000 headlight when it got smashed on the job site. And this headache rack and toolbox in the bed helped with our transformation. Driveway rescue would not be possible without the generous help from rockauto.com. In fact, they've provided all the replacement parts and accessories that we've installed on this Tundra today. And on the line, I've got Tom Taylor, one of the co-owners of Rock Auto, to show him the progress that we've made on the truck. How's it going, Tom? Great. The, the truck looks really good. Yeah, so we've got a red Tundra here. It's lifted up. And one of the most obvious transformations is, of course, the accessories that we've got on it. Yeah, it looks like it really came together nice. The, the black and red and everything fits so so uh, crisply, really turned out nice. 
And probably my favorite part, which really sets the truck kind of apart from the crowd, is this big grill guard up here. Um, we've got the owner of the truck, Jason. He spends a lot of time out west in some of the oil fields and stuff like that. And he actually just busted out one of his headlights not too long ago because a big valve basically came off the back of another truck and it went right through it. So this grill guard is definitely going to save him in the future. So there's Jason. Hey, hey, Jason, nice to meet you. You too, Tom. Hey, I just want to thank all you guys at Rock Auto and uh, Driveway Rescue for doing this for me. I really appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome, and thanks for giving us your truck to, to show all the parts we have for maintenance and accessories. We really expanded into accessories the last couple of years, adding everything from what's on your truck to bed liners and, and racks for bikes, carpet, trailer hitches, you name it. Well, I definitely know where to go to from now on. <laughs> All right, well, we've got a few things left to tidy up, a few things to make sure are bolted down and tightened up, so we'll let you go, Tom. But once again, thank you so much. We appreciate all your help. Well, thank you, guys. All right, guys, well, I'm super impressed with how the truck turned out. I think even those few simple parts on the outside made a big transformation. I think it'll be a lot more functional for when you get back out in the field. So the only thing left is we want you guys to hop in that truck and go take it for a spin. My turn. All right, enjoy, guys. For more information on our C10 or any project, be sure to check us out at PowerNationTV.com.